All right, JMC 6000 here, here in the JMC Garage for this week's JMC Garage Talk video. And before me, we're gonna talk about the history of the 2.3 in the Ford engine lineup. Now, the 2.3 dates back for quite a while. In fact, I have some notes here about the Ford 2.3. It originally dates back to 1970. Now, this iteration of the 2.3 in my 2025 Explorer is nothing like the 2.3 that dates back all the way back then. But let me read you a little bit of information about, it was originally known as the Ford Pinto engine, also had a code name of the TL, I'm sorry, the T88 series engine, uh, first designed in Europe and then came over here to be put in quite a few products, namely originally the Ford Pinto, and then it carried on to several different iterations after that. In fact, when it was introduced in the Pinto, it wasn't the 2.3. It was, in fact, a smaller version of that engine that gradually grew in size. The engine originally was designed as an overhead cam engine uh, right from the get-go, and that design originally for Ford uh, was, part of, was part of a modern era that Ford was kind of launching into for modern-day engines, especially four-cylinder engines, and it was kind of known that the, the overhead cam design would actually yield better fuel economy, maybe yield better uh, engine design and, and a much better robust engine throughout. Um, it turned out not to be that way, but it, it eventually worked itself out. I, I'm just going to say. So, again, originally in Europe, the Pinto overhead cam was introduced, and again, in 1970, uh, to replace the SX V4. Did you know that Ford made a V4 in Europe? Anyway. The V4, um, and then a couple other things. So again, it, it, it came out in Europe, and then uh, it was originally 1.3 liters, 1.6, you know, and, and some other sizes. But what I want to focus on is the 2.3, uh, which known as the Lima overhead cam, is actually made in the Lima engine plant. Uh, its bore stroke was 89.3 and 79.4 millimeters. Overall displacement. Um, for which was a two liter, and sorry, then it got bumped up again if for the 2.3, whereas the stroke stayed the same, but it was bored out from the two liter to the 2.3. Uh, this version of the engine lasted until 1997, and in fact, Ford later took that engine and bumped it up even more to the 2.5. Anyway, again, just some brief history about the Ford 2.3. And then we're going to go talk about this one in the Ford Explorer 2025. So uh, that engine there, uh, again, lasted quite a few years. It originally started the turbo wave of 80s power performance vehicles for Ford, where they actually strapped a turbo to that engine. First debuted in the Mustang SVO in 1985, and then later on uh, it debuted, in fact, back that up. The first Turbo 2.3 actually debuted in the 1979 Mustang when it got switched over to the Fox body. And then it dropped after 81, then came back again in 1985 for the SVO, uh, actually 84, sorry, for the SVO. And then it was also introduced for the Ford Thunderbird known as the Turbo Coupe in the 80s as well. Um, again, in 1983, Ford introduced a fuel-injected version of this turbo engine, which was used in the Ford Thunderbird Turbo Coupe in the GT trim of the Mustang. And then in 1984, Ford came out with the Mustang SVO, Special Vehicle Operations, was introduced with an intercooler. In fact, if you look at the old 2.3s, the intercooler is actually mounted right on top of the engine. It was a pretty cool design. Almost reminiscent of uh, Subaru's modern intercooled engines, where they actually have their intercooler mounted right on top of the engine so again just kind of briefly going over this stuff you can find all this stuff out there's plenty of information about it but i wanted to kind of lead up to the history to where we are today with this 2.3 that's in my 2025 explorer so as we're moving on again this engine was used in just about everything not the turbo engine but the 2.3 size in general i mean it was used they actually aspirated in the ford aerostar the ford courier the pinto of course all the ranger uh, B series Mazda pickups that were based off the Ranger. Um, <clears throat> the Mustang from 74 to 93, the Maverick in Brazilian models, uh, and just uh, uh, the Mercury Capri, Mercury Zephyr, um, you know, just a bunch of vehicles that this engine was used in. 
Uh, and then the turbo version was used in the Mustang, the Mercury Capri from 79 to 81. The Ford Fairmount actually used a version, I didn't know that, of this turbo engine. Then of course some others, um, don't need that, don't need that, all right. The Mercury Zephyr, the Mercury, or the Mercur XR4, and I have no idea how to pronounce that. Anyway, weird car that was introduced from 85 to 89. Turbo Coupe for the Thunderbird from 83 to 86. Mercury Cougar XR7, uh, which was based off the Thunderbird. Mustang Turbo and the Capri Turbo RS. The turbo intercooled versions was specifically with a good power output that was used from 84 to 86 in the Mustang SVO and the Ford Thunderbird Turbo Coupe from 87 to 88 uh, in the Ford bus and the Ford, sorry, Thunderbird Turbo Coupe. Um, I have a story about that, but maybe I'll tell it later. Awesome. All right. Flash forward, that 2.3 was used all the way up to 97 in the Ranger. It stopped in production uh, when the Mustang got changed over to the SN95 platform in 1994 when they went to the 3.8 liter SX V6. And then after 1997, uh, the 2.3 got bumped up to 2.5 and Ford used that engine, a variation of that engine, a little bit in the Ranger pickups. Um, in fact, I have it right here until 2001. And then all of a sudden, you don't hear this engine anymore. In fact, this engine actually gained dual spark plugs, which was kind of cool that each cylinder had almost like the modern day Hemi where it had two spark plugs. This engine kind of gained that in the later versions of it. So flash forward, let's go forward. I would say roughly almost, I would say about 10 years uh, to right around 2000, well actually more than 10 years, so sorry. To right around 2015, the 2.3 makes a comeback, but in a totally different engine series. One of the things I would say about the Lima engine, the, the Pinto overhead cam engine that the 2.3 was really based off, that was probably one of the, run, the longest running four-cylinder engine that Ford ever produced. One of the longest running, I mean from 1970 all the way up to 1997. Actually, if you want to count the 2.5, it till 2001. I mean, that's a span of, I mean, like almost 30 years. I mean, it's crazy. I mean, that long of an engine family. I mean, that's, that's, that's crazy to think about. I mean, just that span, it's insane. Modern engines don't, don't have that long of iterations, but again, Ford trying to utilize that platform as much as possible to really carry them through the eighties. Now, flash forward to 2015, all the way back in 2011, around 2011, 2012, Ford partnered with Mazda, actually before that they partnered with Mazda to build a two liter based off the Mazda L-Series engine. Uh, that spawned the two liter and the 2.5 uh, that we had, that I had in my Maverick. Uh, that was based off the Mazda L-Series engines, which dates back to around 2004, 2005. Uh, again, Ford partnered with Mazda. That's when they had a stake in Mazda. Now, <clears throat> when you go to Ford's EcoBoost line of four cylinders, most of them were based off the Mazda L series. So the Ford started turbocharging that engine and direct ejecting it back around 2011, 2012, that first introduced in the Escape, in the Fusion, uh, in those vehicles there, and then later was debuted in the Explorer. Well, in 2015, Ford wanted to bump up the power and the output of that engine, so they bumped it up to the famous 2.3 liters. They took the original two liter of the Mazda L-Series, they stroked it, and they came up with the 2.3. Whereas before, with the, uh, the Lima or the Pinto engine, they actually bored it out from the two liter to make it the 2.3. This time, they actually stroked it, giving the 2.3 more low end grunt over the two liter that was used. So, and that engine has been successful. In fact, it's used currently in the current Ford Ranger, even the 2024, uh, was used in the Mustang, produced almost, you know, actually it was used in the Focus RS, producing upwards of 350 horsepower out of a four cylinder, absolutely unheard of. And uh, just a really good four cylinder for Ford. In fact, uh, most people credit the 2.3 as a good running, and not really good running, but an actual reliable four-cylinder. If you look at the stats of the 2.5, if you look at the stats, I'm sorry, 2.5, if you look at the stats of the 2.3 reliability and all that, even though it's only direct injected only, it's actually a really good running 
four-cylinder. Now we flash forward to today, and you may be like, well, John, what, what's the difference between this engine and your Explorer? Because even though it's a 2.3, this shares nothing with outside of the displacement and maybe a few bolts. This shares nothing with the Mazda L Series base 2.3 that was used in the 2020 to 2024 base engine in the Explorer, also used in the current Mustang. I'm uh, sorry, in the previous generation Mustang, rather. This engine right here is the new 2.3 MPC EcoBoost. Now, the MPC stands for Modular Power Cylinder, and Ford took this design, went clean sheet. They're totally their own engine design. Um, they've learned from what they gathered with their partnership with Mazda with the L Series, and they kind of base something that is more robust, uh, and they kind of address a lot of the issues that Ford had with the old 2.3, with the old 2 liter, especially engine block issues. This uses a semi-closed deck block. Um, it's not fully closed deck, but it's a semi-closed is what they would call it. Uh, this engine also utilizes a built-in catch cam. If you can picture that with this engine, you wouldn't need a catch cam. And one of the best things about this engine actually uses dual injection. So the MPC version of the 2.3 actually has injectors. Uh, you can see the rail if I was to maybe point that out. In fact, I can do that for you. You can see the rail, uh, maybe, right there. That's the fuel rail for the port injection and the, inje the direct injections underneath the intake. But this is the modern day 2.3 MPC. One of the benefits about this engine, again, it has a built-in kind of a catch can system. Pretty awesome. I didn't know, you know, Ford could actually do that, but they actually have it right up top here. Whereas the vapors and, and everything passes through this kind of built-in system and the excess oil drops right back into the engine. Pretty awesome. This also has dual injection. Uh, this also is a more robust engine with a robust block. And if you ever heard this engine or a 2024 Mustang, just 2024, because that's when they introduced this engine, now it's in the 2025 Explorer. If you ever hear exhaust on this particular four cylinder or any of the new 2024 Mustangs, you notice that they actually have a different sound to them versus the older 2.3. Now, some people may be like, oh, it's a four cylinder, they're all gonna sound the same. No, no different, four, you know, different engines have different sounds. And this thing actually produces more of a, a more of a deeper guttural more of it what i describe the older 2.3 as a whiny ticking sewing machine even when you put exhaust on it they had a really whiny sound to them the mazda l series engines kind of have a whiny sound the 2.5 kind of took care of that but the 2.3 and the 2 liter really have a whiny i've listened to plenty of focus rs focus sts with exhaust and they just had this whiny kind of grainy sound to them. They don't sound very refined. This engine on the other hand has a very refined, a different sound to it. Yes, it's the same displacement. Yes, it has the same firing order, but the engine itself being it's on a totally different block, totally different head design. Uh, this doesn't use direct acting mechanical buckets. Those are the little cam buckets that where the camshaft will ride on top of the valve on the older L series design of the older 2.3, whereas this one actually uses actually a rocker arm, uh, roller finger followers, as Ford would call them, where they actually have a little bit of uh, roller on them and it actually uses a pivot point to where it will actually open the valve instead of having the camshaft directly on top of the valve, it's directly on top of this little pivot roller finger follower that actually activates. So, again, different design altogether. But I believe this is a better engine design. Uh, you can hear the turbo more in this engine. It actually is smoother uh, when it's warmed up. It runs quieter. And this is actually, a, yeah, it's actually a smoother engine as well. So, and this engine actually produces just as much power as the older 2.3, if not in some applications, a little bit more. I think Ford has grossly underrated this engine. Grossly underrated this engine. Uh, it's in the Mustang and the Mustang even the 2024 has been known to Keep up with even performance based or the performance pack Mustangs of the years prior And they were supposed to be uh, you know, the engine lifted right out of the Focus RS when the Mustang anyway, just saying so There goes our history of the 2.3 Ford 
four cylinder, again, going through three different generations from the original Pinto design to the Monster L series design, and now to their now back to Ford's inherent design of the MPC, the modular power cylinder design. And this shares components with the two liter MPC that's found in the Ford Escape, that's going to be in the upcoming Maverick. And also it shares components with the 1.5 three cylinder MPC that's found in the base engine of the Escape and probably going to be in the upcoming Bronco Sport that's going to be revealed here in the next week or so. Anyway, if you guys have any questions, comment, like, comment, subscribe, hit the bell notification. If you guys like this video, please subscribe for more content like this. I have different videos coming. Again, thank you for joining me in the JMC Garage and the brief history of the Ford 2.3 that is found underneath the hood of my 2025 Explorer. Stay tuned for more videos to come. Um, I have some mods that I have coming up for this Explorer, and I can't wait to show them to you, and it's going to be absolutely awesome. You guys be blessed, and we'll catch you.